These are the best NVIDIA settings for Counter-Strike 2 which will lower your input delay and boost your FPS. The first thing you want to do is update your graphics drivers, as with the latest game ready driver NVIDIA always adds new functionality as well as a ton of optimizations, and it's usually supporting the latest game that's out at the minute which is Counter-Strike 2. In order to get the latest game ready driver just simply google it, then click the first link, make sure it's nvidia.co.uk.com, then on the official website you want to click on these drop down boxes and find your specific GPU then just like that you will see the latest driver that has been released and you can see here it's the 537.42 one which is currently the best one out at the minute for Counter-Strike 2 so you can go ahead and download it like that. Alternatively you can open up an app called GeForce Experience where you'll find the latest game ready driver right here this is probably an easier method to be fair but also for those out there that do prefer for the older drivers, here are a few good ones on screen that I've heard about that still work really well even to this day. Once you've got the latest drivers, you want to right click on your desktop and select the NVIDIA control panel. And under the 3D settings tab, you want to make sure you select the middle one that's use the advanced 3D image settings, then click take me there. Now before you mess around with any of these settings, we want to go into program settings and actually select the specific game we're optimizing which will be Counter-Strike. Now you can look in your applications and it might be there, it might not. If it's not, just go ahead and click add. And inside there, you should find the CS2.exe. Just go ahead and add the selected program. After you've selected that game, this means any settings we customize in the program settings will be strictly for that game. And starting off with the first setting, that's image scaling. What this does is enable scaling and sharpening for the game itself, which we do want to go ahead and turn off. Ambient occlusion, this is a visual setting that makes the game look better. Actually, a lot of these are right here. This is another one you want to have turned off to get more FPS. And isotropic filtering is another setting that improves the textures. I believe it's like the crispiness of it. This is one that you can go ahead and turn off. But since it's recommended by NVIDIA, I like to just have this on application controlled. And I just go ahead and leave it alone. Underneath that, we've got more anti-aliasing settings. We've got the FXAA, the gamma correction, and the mode. Now, for the FXAA, this is one I do recommend turning off to boost your FPS but for the gamma control one this is one setting that some people have been turning on strictly for CSGO specifically if you do play with a higher digital vibrance I myself aren't using the digital vibrance at this time so I turn this off however if you are using a higher digital vibrance which I'll show you how to later on in this video you want this turned on but like I mentioned this is off for myself and aliasing mode this is another one I keep on the recommended that's application controlled and then for the last anti-aliasing, that's the transparency, you want this turned off. Scrolling down from that, we've got the background application max frame rate. This is a sort of thing that runs in the background that renders like the frame rate of your game. I turn it off, I don't use it whatsoever. A CUDA GPUs, you want this to be on all and you want your graphics card selected. DSR factors and smoothness, this is your dynamic super resolution. And this is something I recommend just having off if you use either a native res or a stretched resolution. It's basically a setting that improves the image quality but we want the most FPS possible and we don't really like need any of that so I just keep it off. Low latency mode, this is an Nvidia setting that can heavily reduce your latency which benefits you a ton. Now for this, I've got a recommendation. Um, if you've got a low slash medium, like bad PC basically, or old PC rather, I would recommend turn this off as you're probably gonna get more FPS. But if you've got a mid tier slash decent PC, you might actually benefit from having it turned on. And then finally, if you've got a high-end PC, you also might want to have it either on or on ultra. That could benefit you even more. But for the majority of people out there, I think on is just the best setting for low latency mode. Max frame rate is a setting that gives you a max frame rate. I don't know why you'd want to have this on. I think the most FPS you can get, the better. You don't want to cap it at any sort of like max frame rate. Multi-frame sampled AA is a anti-aliasing setting, I believe, and it's one I like to 
are turned off. Open GL GDI compatibility I like to have on auto. Some prefer performance but I think auto is just the best. Let Nvidia actually decide it for you. I think that's just the safer option. There's also another setting that's open GL rendering GPU. This is something I like to auto select. Some people like to select their GPU but just let it auto select. It's all good. Power management mode is a setting that allows you to set a preference for your graphics card's performance level when like obviously running. Now this is one that's a bit iffy. Some people just choose prefer maximum performance as they want the maximum performance possible but some people have found that optimal power is actually better for performance in the long run especially for higher end systems however i've found that prefer maximum performance is the best for my pc and a lot of pcs out there but again it's one of those you just want to test out you'll find either optimal power will be better or prefer maximum performance will be better preferred refresh rate this must be on highest available especially if you use a 144 hertz monitor a 240 hertz monitor or even a 360 hertz monitor make sure this is selected on highest available so you get the highest available refresh rate you also should go into advanced display settings on windows and make sure you've got the highest refresh rate set up in here as well uh, the bottom one will be the maxed hertz you can actually get on your monitor shader cache size is one i like to have on default some people do like to set custom ones like 100 gigabyte or whatever but i just like to put it on the driver default scrolling down from that we've got four different texture filtering settings now for this first one i've seen a ton of people use off and a ton of people use on it's one of them that you've just got to test out for yourselves and see which one performs better i myself have found off is actually a bit better as for the rest of the settings these are are pretty standard we've got the negative LOD bias on allow the quality on high performance I've also seen some people use quality but I think high performance is just the best for high performance obviously and then for trilinear optimization I've seen pretty much everyone use on moving on from that we've got threaded optimization which does take advantage of those out there that have multiple CPU cores if you've got like four or more CPU cores you definitely want to have this on but if you don't know you can just put it on auto and then video will find find out for you and obviously put the setting on which one it should be automatically triple buffering this is a setting i like to have off and then vertical sync i just let the 3d application setting do its thing virtual reality preframes i just keep on one that's a default and then this last setting i just keep on the default two which is auto moving on from that we've got adjust desktop color settings now firstly you want to select your main gaming monitor which should be at the far left or the first one rather scrolling down from that the only ones i mess with is digital vibrance now by default it is on 50 percent but if you slowly increase this setting right here you will notice an increase in the vibrance everything will look a lot more colorful the colors will be more pronounced and just way more vibrant overall on the left we've got normal settings no digital vibrancy then on the right we've got an increased digital vibrancy and you can sort of see the difference right there on screen so that right there is just a setting that's personal preference and it's something you need to try out in game and finally we've got the adjust desktop size and position again you want to select your main game and monitor i highly recommend using a scaling mode of full screen right here that's a middle one and then i also like to perform for my scaling on GPU rather than display. And that right there has been the best NVIDIA settings for Counter-Strike 2 that should lower your input delay and boost your FPS. If the video has helped out, feel free to drop a like on it and drop a sub to the channel. That's all I've got for now. Be sure to check out these other videos on screen that should help you out a ton.